Hey everybody, Scott here, and I know it's been a while, but I wanted to go ahead and get this one up for you. And it's talking about conflict today, but what I want to focus on is not so much really what conflict is, but how you can edit it and the types of questions you're going to want to look at when you're taking a look at the conflict in your story. And we're going to look at both the internal and the external conflict here. So let's go ahead and let's move on with this lesson here. So first of all, let's ask ourselves, what is conflict? And this is something, honestly, I think a lot of authors really struggle with. I don't think many authors really know what the conflict is in their story. And in many cases, they don't even have a conflict. So let's look at the ideas right here. First of all, we say conflict is the thing standing in the way of the characters achieving their goal. It's that thing that's getting in their way, that's preventing them from making that forward movement. That's conflict. Conflict. And conflict, you'll notice here, it's the central element of the entire plot. The conflict is what drives the characters towards the resolution in their book. They've got that ultimate goal that they're shooting for, and they got to get there, and there's this thing that's standing in the way. Now, I want to really stress this one point right here, and that's conflict is different than complication. And I think that that is a key thing that I want you to really remember. A lot of books that I read come out and I'm like, there's no conflict here. It's just a complication. Now let's kind of talk about the difference between those two. A complication, the easiest way to think about this one is that we go back to all those wonderful sitcoms and we sit there and we waste our time watching. And okay, it's it's a guilty pleasures, but we sit there and we watch these things week after week. And I think a good example of this one would be that single conflict or complication we always see driving those where somebody comes in and overhears that conversation. Maybe the, the husband walks into a room and hears the the wife talking about hearing words like baby, OBGYN, looking forward to this. Wow, things are going to grow. And they hear that and immediately their brain is going, oh my gosh, we're going to have a baby. And their whole complication centers around that of trying to kind of, are, oh, are we going to talk about it or not or or any of those things. When in reality, that wife was talking to maybe a best friend. Maybe that was the whole issue, that there was no pregnancy. But that's the complication. Now, that's not a conflict. That's not anything that we have to overcome because the reality is a complication can be fixed really quickly. In this case, it would simply be the guy walking in going, hi, honey, I just heard you talking about Dr. OBGYN. Are we pregnant? And she says, nope. And everybody goes, okay, and that's done. A conflict, however, is bigger. A conflict is something that people are going to have to problem solve, have to work through, have to maybe um, overcome personal issues just to be able to make that next step to get to that point. That's a conflict, right? You ca a conflict is not an easy solution. Let's go back to another type of complication I often hear, and some people will call this a conflict, and, and that's when you, you've got somebody who says, oh my gosh, I, I, we just don't have enough money to pay the bills. Okay, that's a conflict or, or a small complication. It's a matter of let's go find that solution, and it's not a matter of, of building something bigger or anything like that. It's just let's go figure out how we're going to pay the bills. That's generally a complication. Conflicts, however, like I said, that's going to be that big issue that's really going to stand in the way. And that's when your internal and external conflicts come into play and have to work together. So let's go ahead and let's move on and understand what we mean by internal conflicts. Internal, meaning those emotional or mental aspects holding the character back from what they want to do. Those are going to be those conflicts. That might be a, a perception. Maybe maybe it's the character perceives themselves as not being beautiful, um, not being attractive. Maybe they feel that they're over, 
uh, heavy set and they've got to get over that feeling or maybe it's that insecurity or something along those lines maybe they they grew up in a household where uh, business 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 and that's exactly what you do and they have to understand that it's okay to break free and maybe have fun um, these things might come from backstory elements, but they don't have to. That's often a big problem that I see a lot of authors doing is that we have an internal conflict and maybe that's just the way the person was raised. But then the author turns around and says, ooh, now I've got to build that up. So they create these long, elaborate, drawn out backstories to somehow justify that when maybe it's, that's just their personality. But the key is that these are mental roadblocks. The character has to find something along the way, something in that pathway for them to break free. And they are not going to just wake up one morning and go, oh, I've changed my mind. I feel better about it. They're going to have to see something along those lines. So that might simply be, let's go back to that business one. Maybe maybe they have to just get out and actually have fun one day. Maybe they, they, they have to go to a, um, I'm trying to think of a good example here. They've got to go to a winter celebration to represent something for their company. And part of this is ice skating and they get out there and they're doing the ice skating and suddenly they find that they're slipping, they're falling. But it's kind of funny. And that's, that simple act is like, you know something, maybe I am having fun doing this. But they've got to figure that piece out. And again, it's not going to be an overnight change. So you got to be careful about those. But again, it has to be something other than simply changing their mind. They're not going to just suddenly say, nope, change my mind. I'm going to go this way now. There's got to be something in the storyline that sparks that that changes their attitude, that changes their mind. They've got to be able to see that. That's your internal conflict. Now let's talk about that external conflict. Now, external conflict, something going on in the world that's complicating their journey. Now let's go back to that business situation. Maybe that external conflict is that there's this contract that has to get fulfilled, that has to get done. That's an external conflict, right? And they're going to have to figure out how they work through this. And maybe that contract that they're working through, that contract negotiation is getting in the way of maybe that relationship. Now, they're going to have to figure out how to work through that. The, you know, maybe the hero and the heroine, maybe the heroine's on the opposing side of that conflict. And they've fallen in love or they're starting to fall, maybe falling in like early on. And then suddenly that relationship is building and now they're suddenly finding, wait a minute, we're on the opposing side here. One of us is going to have to lose out or maybe we can't have this relationship. That's the key thing. It might be something historical that's part of your world building. I know many of my authors, my historical authors in particular, always go out when they get ready to write a story, they find that historical conflict to build their story around. If you really think about historical fiction, that's what historical fiction is. We build it around a historical event and put historical characters into it. But the key thing is that external conflict cannot be the thing that's driving the story. And I want you to be, on, be clear on this. The thing that drives the story is the character would be the characters trying to figure out how to overcome each of these obstacles. That's what drives that story. So here's some questions to ask about your conflicts. And I want you to really think about that for all of your books. I want you to ask yourself, first of all, is that conflict that you're looking at, is it truthfully believable? Or have you just created this fantastical conflict just to make something really big? But the reality is it's not believable. It's got to be something that really real everyday people are going to be facing. I want you to also ask yourself, is this even a conflict that they can even overcome? Because it might not be. It might be a conflict, and too often I see that, uh, a conflict where it just can't be fixed. And that's okay. That's, things like that happen in the world. We're not going to be able to fix that. But we can't, we can't build a story out of somehow mysteriously finding a way to overcome that conflict if it really can't be overcome. And you can't just make up some sort of divine inspiration on this. And that goes into that third point. Is this something that, uh, something of the character's own doing? 
And that goes back, that's something that really, it, it always bugs me when I read a story that there's this huge conflict, but it's like, you know something, you want me to respect your character, but if your character is the one who put themselves into that conflict, that's a little weak. Right, So you have to ask yourself, is this a conflict that they put themselves into? And if it is, then that's a matter, then now we have to get to that internal conflict that they're going to have to fix the internal part before they change the other one. I want you to also ask yourself when it comes to conflict, is there what we call a dark moment? And that dark moment is really that moment when those characters are going to have to make a decision and it's not going to come out good either way. So we go back to that business one, right? That they're on opposing sides. And those that the hero and the heroine are on opposing sides of that c contract negotiation. And they can't work together. But if they're in a relationship together, then somehow that's going to prevent the contract from going through. So you're going to have to figure out that dark moment. How are they going to overcome that? And it can't be, again, divine inspiration. I'm always frustrated when I see, you know, divine inspiration suddenly popping in, or in, not divine intervention, not inspiration, divine intervention when suddenly everything is falling apart. And then mysteriously, they find out that their great uncle left them an inheritance of everything that they were looking for. And that's a real weak way to get through that conflict because, you know, something we wanted to watch the characters overcome this, not suddenly find out, oh, that money was there all along. Oh, that's weak. I want you to also ask yourself, if that conflict is just sort of there, how much can you raise those stakes to really push it to that point that that it looks like it's not going to be easy to overcome. A lot of times conflicts really just are, like I said, they're com complications more than anything else. So we take that complication. How can we amp that complication up to the point that it really is a conflict? And then we look at this last one. Are the conflicts of the main characters working against each other negatively? And that's where you want to look at those internal and external conflicts. Because in reality, those that character's internal conflict might be something that um, that their internal conflict is really just not going to work here. So if that makes any sense, I, it suddenly came out of my mouth and didn't sound quite right. But the real question is, are these conflicts working in a way that's not going to advance the plot? That's going to be the key thing. So as you think about your conflicts in your books, I want you to always be asking yourself self these deep questions. It's not just sort of an event that happens in your story. And I want you to be clear on that. Conflicts are not just another scene that shows up. Conflicts are part of the big picture. So hopefully that helps you out. As always, I want you to understand, uh, please, if you like this, make sure that you give me a thumbs up and you like this. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so when I get these things posted, um, we're going to hopefully see a few more of these coming up shortly. But when I start posting those, you'll see those. Remember, if you do subscribe to this, once we hit our thousandth subscriber, and I know it's a way out there, but when we hit that thousand subscriber, I am going to make sure that we give this, uh, give a six-month men mentorship to somebody out there. So make sure that you have the opportunity to do so, uh, to su subscribe to this. Remember also that you can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on so uh, Instagram. I'm on Facebook. The, the agency is. So make sure you check out there. If you want to submit to me, please remember, if you're going to submit, go back and review the website. Make sure that you follow those guidelines. Make sure that it's actually something that I want. And also, if you are working with a writing chapter or a professional writing organization and you'd like me to come and speak to your group or do something virtually, please just reach out and ask and I'm always here for you. Remember what Ray Bradbury says, um, you only fail if you stop writing, so please don't stop writing. I will see you next time when we post something new. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.